So without further ado, I shall start my session. Okay. Um, earlier on, we heard Roger speak about uh, NASOS and DCOS. Okay. So uh, he has spoken also a lot about the automation of DCOS. Okay. And that is why I'm here to actually continue that story. Okay. So I got to actually thank Roger for giving a very good introduction on uh, the NASOS and the DCOS stack. Okay, so um, without further ado, I shall start my presentation. Okay, you see two names up here. Okay, a lawyer and myself. I'm Mervyn. Okay, and I'm a solution architect with Dynaface. Okay, so a little bit about uh, Aloyas first. Okay, Aloyas is uh, Dynaface's technology lead for cloud and containers. Okay, and what actually you saw on the first screen was a lot on uh, uh, actual deployment of diamond trace in a production environment. Okay, so actually a lawyer works a lot with our uh, customers to modernize their technology and their data center stack. Okay, so uh, most of you I believe have deployed uh, virtualized servers, VMs, in fact moving on to cloud deployments these days, correct? Okay, so uh, a lawyer actually helps them to monitor all these and also helps them to do uh, monitoring in the modern space. So uh, he's the main person who, who designed this uh, uh, presentation deck. Okay? And if you have any questions, actually, you can post to his uh, LinkedIn or his uh, uh, Twitter account. Okay? And for myself, okay, so who am I and what am I? Okay, I'm actually a uh, solution architect, okay, a sales engineer, if you call it, and I work with customers. Okay, so I actually help them to do a lot of, uh, you know, I listen to their challenges a lot. Okay, but after I listen to their challenges, what do I actually help them to do? Right? I help them to sleep very well at night. Okay, so just like what Roger mentioned, okay, traditionally everybody who is doing any monitoring okay, would face a problem of being called in the night at 2 a.m. Okay, and so that is what Dynatrace is actually about. Okay, Dynatrace has been around in the market to do application performance management for a very, very long time. Okay, and it was actually founded in Austria. Okay, so it's it's headquartered in the United States, okay, but the software itself has been backed by uh, 700 over R&D engineers in Austria. Okay, and who have been using Dynatrace? 8,000 over customers across the industries. Okay, so with this good uh, reference base, okay, what we do is that when we help customers uh, you know, sleep very well at night, okay, because they are doing 24 by 7 monitoring, okay, we have actually accumulated a lot of uh, performance and stability problem patterns outside there. Okay. So, we have seen a shift in technology recently, right, just like what uh, the speaker before me mentioned, okay, traditionally people have uh, deployed uh, VMs, servers, Okay, to help them run their applications. But now these days, it's no longer the case. Okay. So that, that is about me and about lawyers and about Dynatrace. Maybe just a bit of exercise. I'd just like to know more about you. Okay. So how many of you here have actually managed containers in, in productions? Maybe can I just have a raise of hands? Wow, okay. It's quite a bit. And what about, do you think, you know, when you run containers, is your life very much easier? Or is it more challenging or oh, easier? But it's only half of those who realize it's easier. So I think that is the main challenge, right? A lot of people think that if I move from a server or a VM kind of architecture to a containerized architecture, all my problems will go away overnight. But in fact, it is not really the case. Okay, most of the time, we will see this happening. Now, um, this, this is an old joke in, in the United States, right, where people, you know, um, after uh, they fought a war, they, they've gone to battle and they've done a lot of things, they sit around a campfire and share their stories. Okay? So they like to share a lot of their stories, and uh, this story in particular is related to actually this mushroom cloud effect. Okay? So what is this mushroom cloud effect? It seems that you know when something very small that happens on the very low layer has a very big impact 
okay, it's impact everything across the board. Okay. And usually it starts with a very small and minor incident. Okay. And that's how everything then gets messed up. Okay. And then you have one guy here who, who doesn't know anything, who thinks that, oh yeah, you know, I'm still in, being able to deploy things very easily and, and you know, uh, well, this shouldn't impact me at all. Nothing should, should have any problems for me. Right? But this is far from the truth. Right? In actual fact, uh, those people who just raise their hands to say that, you know, uh, in, when they deploy containers, okay, they do actually uh, face, uh, or rather, it, it has made their life easier. But what about the rest? Right? It seems that actually, you know, when you deploy containers, sometimes the challenges just don't disappear overnight. So, the key thing is, containers can fail, right? Containers can fail, and we have heard about the ability to actually auto, uh, self-recover or auto-recovery, okay? But in the actual um, production deployment itself, right, when you actually deploy it in a real-life scenario to support singles day, for example, okay, many things actually do happen, and I'm here to actually show you Okay, what can actually happen? Okay, so TLDR, too long don't we? Right? There's too many things that's happening. Now what actually is it what, what is actually being shown here is an actual screen okay, from Dynatrace when we are monitoring a customer, a production environment. Okay, this production environment is an e-commerce site okay, that is not very different from Taobao. Okay, it's not very different from uh, uh, Alibaba or, or any of the e-commerce sites in China. Okay. So what do, what do we actually have here? Okay. At the bottom layer, we have the host. Okay. Somewhere in the middle, you see the processors and the containers, and you later see the application services. Now, this stack represents the complexity that you have to deal with. Right. People say that if I deploy host, I just manage host. If I deploy containers, I just manage this level, right? but things are changing very quickly. Okay? And that's where you have all the complexities that you have so many different application stacks running on top of all these. And when one, just one speck of this, something happens here, do you know the impact? And that is why we call it the mushroom cloud effect. Right? Something small here can actually have this big impact when we don't manage things carefully. Okay? And so that is uh, how actually Dynaface can help to do uh, the monitoring. Right? But before we go into that, okay, just a little bit about basics to refresh uh, what the earlier uh, speaker has mentioned about cloud scaling systems. Okay, so the important aspects of uh, scaling systems in, in the cloud systems is that you, know, you have lots of microservices, okay, and you also have uh, the interconnectivity and the dependencies between the services. So that becomes uh, somewhat, in, in, makes it a very interesting environment to work with. Right? Now, if you have heard, Amazon does a deployment once every 11.6 seconds. So how do they actually keep up with all this kind of deployment? Right? It's because they, they are able to use uh, containers and clouds to give zero downtime versioning and API compatibility. So this is the reality that we are dealing with. Right? So all is good, yes, you know, containers are good, um, helps you to scale very fast. But what about actually when it, time, when it comes to you know, the migration effects, uh, aspects of it? And if you take a look at this, this, this on the left hand side represents your traditional way. Right? Most people uh, sit inside a data center or in an enclosed environment and develop applications for six months. Eight months, okay, and they develop a very big application. Right? But now, uh, as we see, in, in fact, if you have heard many speakers before me, and as well as uh, to today and tomorrow, many people are changing it to small room uh, deployments. In fact, somebody can be coding from his uh, bunker in, in a basement, right? uh, as they say, you know, a 400 kilogram hacker. You, you won't even know that he's actually developing a very important aspect of the code. So this is the reality that we are seeing, a, a transition between big, big and small. Okay? And then, what, what are people actually, uh, what, what kind of size of development teams are we looking at now? 
Okay, we are actually looking at a very small size of team that, as they say, pizza box teams. And it's well said by the Amazon CEO, right? You know, how, how do I determine how many coders do I need to build this application? As long as I can feed them with one pizza box, okay, that's the size that I need. So that's, that's what you have there, right? The new rules in the game, okay, where you build it, you run it. Traditionally, people, the developers would just send the code over to the operations guys to deploy the code in production. But these days, it's no longer the case. The reality means that after okay, you, 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 you do your uh, coding and your deployment, you ship it in terms of the modules, standard blocks. And that's where the DCOS and the Meson stacks can actually help you okay, to, to do all that very quickly. Okay. And you can see even that the, 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 the way the data center moves. Okay. Traditionally, people say that you know I have all these racks and racks of servers. These days, the data center is somewhat like a software. You don't even see it. Right? The, the cloud, you know, the AWS clouds and the uh, Azure clouds of the world. In fact, uh, I, I heard that Alibaba is also coming out with the Ali Green, right? The Ali Cloud itself. Okay, so in that kind of environment, right, in, in environments that scale very quickly, you would have a new platform that help you to run your applications. Okay. So what is this uh, platform about? This platform is about actually, you know, it being a very clustered kind of thing. And this word just simply means that the containers don't stay static. Today, in the morning, you might have about two or three containers running. In the afternoon, it can scale up to 20, 30. Okay. And in the evening, it can actually scale down again, back to maybe one or two. Okay. So when, when you have all these in the stack of uh, you know, uh, running all your applications, what you tend to have is that if, let's say, one of these, just only one fails, how do you actually be alerted? And how would you understand the impact that it has across your entire application chain? Okay. So as you can see in this example, okay, 7 a.m. This is a real customer deployment. Right? 7 a.m. we only have two instances. Okay, minimum redundancy. Right? Maybe because uh, nobody is active in, in using the application. But in the afternoon, maybe uh, somebody has released a new um, marketing campaign. Right, the business say that, oh, uh, instead of a singles day, I'm going to have whole singles day. Right? And I'm going to actually help people to uh, reduce, I'm, or rather I'm going to reduce the price of my um, Xiaomi latest phone. Okay, I'm going to have a promotion by 50%. Okay, so, in order to support that kind of load, you scale up. So you have failovers. So yes, it's true, right? Something goes down, it automatically builds. It rebuilds itself and it self heal and self recovers. Okay. But in the end, in the evening, when actually it scales back down, you might not even know, with traditional monitoring tools, you might not even know that this problem existed. Now, what if two days later, the business team decides to run another promotion, and this promotion is even way bigger right, than the single day promotion? Are you going to face with this problem, or are you going to face with a bigger problem? Something like this. So imagine, right? all these services connect to each other and, and talk to each other. So in, in such a complex environment, you would want to be able to quickly identify the root causes, quickly identify and correlate that it is not the infrastructure, but my application code. Quickly correlate and say that, oh, my application code is actually optimized. All I need is maybe a new service provider, for example. Right. So everything is really related about services. It's not so much of your individual containers, the individual master space, how many instances you actually spin up. Right. What you want to be able to do is to have a correlation and a tracing but let's say, for example, I have a back-end service that handles payment right, or, or back-end service that actually uh, handles uh, computation of uh, 
uh, how many people have done the order versus how many people have uh, submitted the order and so on and so forth. So you have different services supporting this thing and later on it talks to different databases. So how do you know the actual correlation you should across? Okay, there are actually many open source uh, freeware solutions out there that can draw this picture for you. Okay, if you just do a Google search, I think, or maybe a Python search, you may be able to find uh, Zipkin. Okay, it's a very popular open source tool. Right? However, bear in mind that what you will get is a picture, but a picture that won't be able to actually help you to correlate and understand and in fact help you to change your application and modify it to be able to suit the increase in the load. Okay. So that's where we come in. Okay. And if, let's say, one container fails, do you actually know if there is an impact on the performance or not? Or is this something that you know maybe you can wait until a bit later to actually uh, resolve and troubleshoot? Okay. So this cascading failures actually can lead to a mushroom cloud effect. Okay. And before, you, you want to know, you want to be proactive about this. You want to be able to arrest this problem and, and solve it before it impacts even more people. Okay. So, I would just like to show you okay, a real-life example where in one of our customers, this was very useful. So, again, this, this picture again that we, we actually uh, drew up okay, of for the customer. Now, let's take a look at actually what happened. Okay, the problem was this hungry container breakdown issue. Right? It's very simple. People have shared logs on partitions on post. Right? You have many uh, slave nodes. Okay, and one of the benefits of Nessos is to be able to have a shared storage for you to write everything into the same NSF storage or whatsoever. Okay. But this guy, uh, very interestingly, in, in his rush to develop and, and you know, publish applications, he actually didn't cater for log uh, rotation and archiving of ad logs. Uh, he was pressured by the business. He says, no, I, I must deploy. Right? I must deploy tomorrow. Right? I, I'm very sure most of you actually face that same kind of pressure. So this problem is actually a very real, real issue. Right? Where you know you have a shared box partition and it runs out of space. So, Nestle says, no problems. Right? I sell to you. Runs out of space, it's okay. I shut down, I start up another instance. But this actually went on many, many, many times. Now, it keeps on repeating itself until Valid Docker itself ran out of space. Now, that is very, very, very serious. What happens when Valid Docker runs out of space? So your cluster nodes are no longer able to run any containers. You can't even start any more instances to sell to you and help yourself. Okay. The core of Docker itself actually crashed. So, won't you want to be able to be able to actually understand and uh, arrest this problem quickly? Right. That, that is actually where Dynaphase can help to correlate and string everything together. Okay. And I wasn't joking when I said that you know we have eight thousand of our customers because we built on the experiences, and a lot of customers have actually uh, understood us, uh, or rather we have understood a lot of customers' challenges. When we monitor their environments and we actually see all these common problems that can happen. Okay. So essentially, okay, what what can you and, and whether can this actually has any impact on the service? Okay, initially, okay, most of the customers say that yes, that there's no problems, right? Valid Docker run out space, I just kill it, restart it. Okay. I clean up the space. But what is the actual impact on the services and the database and the Tomcat and the applications? Okay, how much time do they need to recover all these? And how long did it take them to actually understand that this had a very big impact? So even before this kind of visibility that was given, they were spending maybe about almost um, eight hours to actually publish the problem. Right? But when they actually have they are able to see graphically 
then the monitoring solution is actually able to help them identify this problem within, I would say, within maybe one or two hours of the, the issue happening. It's even faster. Okay. So that's where okay, you would want to be able to have a dashboard and you want to be able to, to be able to understand the trend and where was it failing, where were the requests failing and what was actually failing during what time. So with this one whole single dashboard, this single view, okay, you are able to strip away all that complexity. You are able to focus and say that, yes, I know that I have to recover this locked uh, partition problem quickly because it is actually affecting my HTTP request. Right? And and you know, this, this request is actually very problematic and, and since a lot of customers are, this is a front-end request and people are using this to actually enter my website, then I want to be able to um, prevent it from happening again. Okay. So, how do you actually, or, or how can you actually avoid this problem? Right? Typically, uh, what the recommendations will come out is to be able to do, uh, use log management, and remove continent cleanup jobs. And then, uh, of course, best practices is to take a look at the valid doctor, okay, to, to actually put it in a separate partition. Okay. So with actually all what we have uh, monitored and what we have shown, we actually help the customer to take a look at this uh, and to arrive at this conclusion okay, in a matter of hours okay, compared to uh, traditional monitoring tools which take very much longer time. Okay, so that, that, that problem was actually a very real problem, right? but if you take a look at um, understanding uh, containers in general, uh, deploying on NASOS and deploying on uh, these kinds of, you know, 11.6 seconds, uh, every deployment, every uh, 11.6 seconds, what you want to do is to actually take a look at a bigger picture, be able to uh, do some kind of uh, testing. Okay. So what you want is to be able to break your containers early and be prepared for things like your uh, Singles Day, um, Black Friday in the US and all that kind of stuff. Right? You want to be able to do many, many rounds of testing. Okay? And you also would want to actually have the capability to include everything during your testing. So that's how a lot of customers actually have seen how we can, how Dynaphase, how monitoring solutions okay, that traditionally monitors only servers, CPU, memory, okay, can actually now change to solve the old problems in a new way okay, and in a very, very exciting way. Okay, so when you start to test everything, this, this is one of the uh, dashboards that we actually show our customers also. When you start to include everything, all your EC2 instances, all your containers, all the cloud environments and everything else, you, you, you might have multiple availability zones, so you might want to test when, when I break this availability zone and I, I uh, you know, suddenly cut the internet connection from this. Okay, how do I detect what's the problem, where's the problem, and recover from it? Okay, so Dynatrace actually takes in all these data, crunches it together, okay, and it's actually able to help our customers even determine things like, look, during one of your testing, okay, the Docker process has a connectivity issue. Okay? So in this kind of complex, complex environment with all these containers, the applications, and all the different layers, imagine if, that, if you were to look at the log files on your own, or if you were to just use modules, you would actually have to understand and look through 820 billion dependencies on your own. So how can you release fast? How can you put your applications out there faster at 11.6 seconds? Every time you, you do this kind of testing, this is the complexity that you have to deal with. Right? So you, you actually have to be able to identify the root cause fast. Okay, not just in terms of production, but even when, when you're doing all your testing. Okay, so that's why automation is needed to pinpoint the root cause 
of these cascading failures. So I think with that, uh, I'm actually going to do a very short demo, okay, just to show you uh, one of the screens. Okay, so this is actually a, a, a demo website that I'm running. Okay, and as you can see, uh, there were many problems that was actually detected across, uh, let's say, the past 72 hours. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem, okay, where the root cause was actually a couch DB issue. Okay, and the JavaScript rate actually increased. So as you can see, what we are monitoring is 63 different services across 395 infrastructure components. Right. No more is just no more is it just a single VM or a single uh, server that you're monitoring or maybe two or three servers. Right. What you're looking at is so many kinds of uh, things. And here, what we tell you is if something happens, we tell you the impact very quickly. So if you take a look at this, the JavaScript error actually increased and it's affecting all different kinds of browsers and all that. So people, when they look at JavaScript errors, they thought, you know, it might be a Java problem, it might, uh, it might be a browser problem, and maybe he's using an old version of the browser. But in actual fact, okay, that's all just guesswork. Right? You want to be able to drill down the root cause quickly, and you would also want to be able to see Okay, how the problem actually evolved over time. Okay, and here we actually have the capability to do a problem replay function. Right. So as the problem actually occurs since 9 a.m. this morning, these were the containers or these were the components that were affected. You see, and it started impacting all the rest and until it impacted the user itself. So you can see that actually here is the root cause of it. Okay? And here is how the whole stream goes up and impacts the user. Okay? So that's, that's how Dynatrace uh, can actually help to uh, provide that one more step of layer of monitoring of, besides just collecting the matrices, it can help you to correlate and help you to understand how did the problem evolve so that you can solve it faster. So with that, okay, I would just uh, like to encourage you, thank you for your time, okay, uh, firstly, and also I would like to encourage you to actually test drive time trace in your production environment. Okay, we have actually a free trial here. Okay, so if you scan this QR code, okay, you can actually go in and uh, download the free trial, deploy the agents in your actual environment. Okay, and we actually, uh, today we are here together with our partner uh, at both three, just outside Bob Mumai, okay, NCS. NCS is actually doing the, uh, the reseller of the DCOS stack that uh, Roger spoke about earlier on, okay, to say that that, that is actually one of the uh, most default uh, orchestration layers that you can have. Right. So once you deploy DCOS, what you'll be able to do is to have that kind of visibility and monitoring across with Dynatrace as a default code in there to do that monitoring for you in the entire stack. Okay, so uh, come to our booth for a demo. Okay, because during lunch time and uh, during the tea breaks, we'll be running through the demos. Okay, and we'll be able to show you some of the problem patterns that are common in the production environment. Okay, next also I would just like to encourage you to, okay, to if if let's say you're very new to uh, application performance, right? Um, if you don't really know um, how your website is actually performing, okay, take up on this challenge that we have, okay, and you can actually win this Bluetooth speaker. Okay, so the card is here, the, the QR code is here, I didn't put it up there. Okay, take the card from me, scan the QR code, all you need to do is just enter your email address here, okay, and then guess how fast is your website. Okay, the person with the closest guess Okay, so let's say if I guess dynaface.com is 5 seconds, okay, and my test says it's 4.8 seconds, okay, I make a guess that it's very close, and if I'm the top person, I will win this. Okay, but this is not for me, this is for you. Okay, so please uh, take up this challenge now, it's, uh, you can actually use this QR code here, okay, and then uh, guess how fast your website is. Okay, thank you for your time.